know what are lipids and their classification, learn the role of lipids in the important physiological processes in the cell, identify the major classes of lipids and predict their physical properties based on their structure and also to analyze how to separate lipids based on their polarity by adsorption chromatography. Lipids are molecules that are sparingly soluble in water and soluble in organic solvents such as chloroform. Lipids are a major constituent of many biological molecules such as vitamins, hormones, fats and oils. Coming to classification of lipids, first we'll talk about fatty acids. Fatty acids are carboxylic acids composed of long hydrocarbon chains. The long hydrocarbon chains can be either saturated or unsaturated. Most structurally occurring fatty acids are composed of even number of carbon atoms since their biosynthesis requires a concatenation of C2 units. Most commonly found fatty acids have carbon atoms between 14 and 20. In higher plants and animals, half of the fatty acids are polyunsaturated. Predominantly found saturated fatty acids include palmitic acid C16, stearic acid C18 and arachidic acid C20. The notation used to represent unsaturated fatty acids is C N where C represents the number of carbon atoms and N represents the number of double bonds in the fatty acid. Commonly found unsaturated fatty acids are oleic acid, linoleic acid, linolenic acid and arachidonic acids as shown. In the unsaturated fatty acids, the double bonds are always found in the cis configuration. This cis configuration across the double bonds introduces a rigid 30 degree bend in its structure which interferes in its efficient packing due to which unsaturated fatty acids have a lower melting point than their saturated counterparts. You can see in the figure the space filling models of saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids. However, in bacteria, polyunsaturated fatty acids are rarely found. Bacteria commonly contain fatty acids that are highly branched, hydroxylated or contain cyclopropane rings. Fatty acid derivatives function also as hormones. Fatty acids are precursors to an important class of paracrine hormones known as eicosanoids. Paracrine hormones are those hormones that act on cells located near their site of synthesis. There are three important classes of eicosanoids, prostaglandins, thromboxanes and leukotrienes. The 20 carbon polyunsaturated fatty acid arachidonic acid is the precursor to all these three kinds of hormones. You may see in the figure the synthesis of prostaglandin E1, thromboxane A2 and leukotriene A4. Prostaglandins were first isolated from the prostate gland by Bengt Samuelson and Soom Bergstrom. They can either be water soluble or ether soluble. They influence the sleep wake cycle, blood flow to certain organs, responsiveness to glucagon and epinephrine. They also elevate body temperature. Thromboxanes are six membered ring structures containing an ether. Produced by platelets in the blood, they play a role in blood clotting and reduction of blood flow to the site of the clot. Leukotrienes are characterized by the presence of three conjugated double bonds and are important biological signaling molecules. For example, leukotriene D4 induces contraction of smooth muscle cells in the lungs. Overproduction of leukotrienes can result in asthma attacks and hence they are a prime target for anti-asthmatic drugs like prednisone. Triacylglycerols Triacylglycerols are water-insoluble fatty acid esters of glycerol. They are characterized by identity of three fatty acids that are esterified to the three alcoholic groups of glycerol. They serve as energy reserves in the cell. Their utility as energy reservoirs in the cell stems from the fact that compared to carbohydrates and proteins, fats are less oxidized and hence more energy is released on oxidizing the same amount of fat. Also, since they are non-polar, they are stored in anhydrous form unlike carbohydrate polymers like glycogen that bind twice their weight of water. A schematic diagram of glycerol and a triacylglycerol is shown on the screen. 
In some animals, triacylglycerols are stored under the skin where it serves as insulation at low temperatures. This is found in seals, walruses, polar bears, penguins and other warm-blooded animals. Physical properties of a triacylglycerol is largely dependent upon whether it's composed of saturated or unsaturated fatty acids. The figure on your screen shows the proportion of saturated and unsaturated three kinds of uh, food. Vegetable oils like olive oil have triacylglycerols with unsaturated fatty acids and thus are liquid at room temperature. Fat-rich foods are found to give off a foul smell if kept outside for long hours. This happens due to the oxidative cleavage of the double bonds in the unsaturated fatty acid chains into carboxylic acids and aldehydes that have a smaller chain length and a higher volatility. This process is what lies behind the rancidity of fats. Partial hydrogenation of double bonds is done to prevent rancidity and improve their shelf life. This process, however, is accompanied by conversion of the cis double bonds into trans double bonds. Consumption of these trans fatty acids or trans fats is associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Hence, fast foods fried in such partially hydrogenated oils are dangerous to our health. The figure shown on your screen is going to show you the percentage of total fatty acids in three different kinds of foods, olive oil, butter and beef fat. These are natural fats at 25 degrees. Now we'll talk about glycerophospholipids. Glycerophospholipids, also known as phosphoglycerides, are membrane lipids that are ester derivatives of L-glycerol 3-phosphate. The C1 and C2 alcoholic groups of glycerol 3-phosphate are esterified to fatty acid residues to generate phosphatic acid the structural parent for all glycerophospholipids. The phosphoryl group of phosphatic acid is esterified to a highly polar and charged group via a phosphodiester linkage, generating a whole class of glycerophospholipids. Among the above mentioned lipids, the phosphatidyl inositols are known for their role in molecular signaling. They also serve as nucleation points for assembly of supramolecular protein complexes involved in the biological signaling pathways. The common property of all the molecules is they're amphipathic in nature. The fatty acid chains form the al aliphatic non-polar chains and the phosphoryl X groups form the polar head groups. While some head groups like phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylethanolamine are positively charged head groups, the others like phosphatidylglycerol are uncharged non-polar head groups. Glycerophospholipids are the major components of biological membranes wherein the fatty acid residues found at the C1 position are usually saturated C16 and C18 and those found at the C2 position are usually unsaturated C16 to C20. There is a class of glycerophospholipids in which the group attached to the C1 of the glycerol backbone is bonded to a fatty acid via an ether linkage instead of an ester linkage. Such are called as ether lipids. If the fatty acid bonded to C1 of the glycerol backbone is an alpha-beta unsaturated fatty acid, then in which the double bond is in the cis configuration, then such a subclass of ether lipids is called as plasmalogens. Approximately half the phospholipids in vertebrate heart tissue are plasmalogens. is also found in membranes of halophilic bacteria and ciliated protists. As opposed to other phospholipids, they are resistant to the action of phospholipases. Another important example of an ether lipid is a platelet activating factor produced by leukocytes in our blood during platelet aggregation. Now we'll talk about sphingolipids. Sphingolipids are major components of biological membranes. This class of lipids are derived from the C18 amino alcohol sphingosine and dihydrosphingosine. The figure on your screen shows the structures of the sphingosine backbone, the structure ceramide, and a typical sphingolipid. In a sphingolipid, the amino group at the C2 position of sphingosine is linked via an amide bond to a fatty acid residue which can be saturated or monounsaturated with 16, 18, 22 or 24 carbon atoms. The C1 position is linked to a polar head group via either a phosphodiester or a glycosidic bond. Ceramide is a structural parent for this class of lipids. 
Derivators of ceramide play important roles in regulation of cell division, differentiation, cell migration and programmed cell death. Sphingomyelins The sphingomyelins contain phosphocholine or phosphoethanolamine as their polar head groups and hence are also classified as phospholipids. Their polar head groups have no net charge, a property similar to phosphatidylcholines. Indeed, the sphingomyelins and phosphatidylcholines share common physical properties and three-dimensional structures. Sphingomyelins are major components of the membrane sheath that surrounds the axons of neurons, that is, the myelin sheath in animal cells. Besides that, membrane sphingolipids are also a source of intracellular messengers. Ceramide and sphingomyelin are important regulators of protein kinases. The figure on your screen shows you the structure of sphingomyelin as well as phosphatidylcholine to help you compare the similarity in the structure of phospholipids as well as sphingolipids. Now we'll talk about glycosphingolipids. Glycosphingolipids are neutral lipids characterized by having one or more carbohydrate residue attached via a glycosidic linkage to carbon-1 of the ceramide structure. Among these, those that have a single sugar residue attached to the carbon-1 of the ceramide structure are known as cerebrocytes. The galactose containing cerebrocytes are especially enriched in the plasma membranes of neuronal cells, while the glucose containing cerebrocytes mainly occur in the plasma membrane of non-neural cells. Those glycosphingolipids with two or more sugar residues attached to the carbon-1 position of the ceramide structure are known as globocytes. These sugar moieties are usually found to be either D-glucose, D-galactose or N-acetyl D-galactosamine. The glycosphingolipids on the cell surface of erythrocytes have special significance in our biological systems. They form a special class of antigens in our body known as blood group antigens. The commonly known blood group system is the ABO blood group system. Individuals in the population can either have blood group A, B, O or AB depending upon whether they have antigens A, B, H or AB on the surface of their erythrocytes respectively. These antigens are essentially glycosphingolipids found on the surface of erythrocytes. The carbohydrate moiety is the H antigen in the precursor oligosaccharide. Addition of N-acetylgalactosamine residue to the terminal position of the H antigen results in the formation of the A antigen. This reaction is specifically carried out by glycosyl transferase enzyme which is present in all A blood group carrying individuals. Likewise, addition of a galactose residue to the terminal end of the H antigen by a different enzyme generates the B antigen which is present in B blood group carrying individuals. Such enzymatic activity is absent in individuals with O blood group and hence they carry the H antigen. The AB blood group is characterized by the presence of both antigen A and antigen B. You can see a diagram of the different oligosaccharides making up the different blood groups on your screen. Individuals with A blood group possess anti-B antibodies in their blood while individuals with B blood group possess anti-A antibodies in their blood. Individuals with AB blood group neither have anti-A nor anti-B antibodies in their blood. Individuals with O blood group possess both anti-A and anti-B antibodies in their blood. The figure on your screen shows you the blood group antigens and the corresponding antibodies in the blood. Now we'll talk about gangliosides. Gangliosides are a third and most complex class of sphingolipids. They have oligosaccharides as their polar head groups. The terminus of the oligosaccharide is a sialic acid, N-acetyl neuraminic acid, which is negatively charged at the physiological pH. Depending on the number of sialic acid residues, gangliosides are characterized as GM monoseries, GD which is a diseries, GT the triseries or GQ which is the four series. The diagram on your screen shows you the structure of sialic acid. Gangliosides are found on the outer leaflet of cell membranes where they are required for recognition of extracellular signaling molecules. They constitute 6% of the brain lipids. They have an important role to play in cell growth and differentiation. There is evidence to show that number and variety of gangliosides are constantly changing during embryonic development. Gangliosides also have a role in carcinogenesis. Now we'll talk about sterols. 
Sterols are the fourth major class of lipids. In contrast to the membrane lipids discussed already, sterols are structural lipids. Their characteristic structure has a steroid nucleus composed of four fused rings. Three of these rings have six carbons, while the fourth ring has five carbons. It's a planar ring system and relatively rigid. Any movement around the CC bonds in this system is restricted. Cholesterol is weakly amphipathic in nature as it has a polar hydroxyl group attached to the third carbon and a long non-polar aliphatic chain attached to the 17th carbon atom. Cholesterol is the main sterol which serves as not only an important structural component of biological cell membranes but is also a precursor to a major steroid hormone class in the body. Steroids regulate many important physiological processes in the body as well as carbohydrate metabolism. Major steroid hormones in our body include the male and female sex hormones and the hormones produced by the adrenal cortex that is cortisol and aldosterol. Plants contain very little cholesterol. They instead have cetosterols and stigma sterols as the sterol components of their membranes. Cholesterol is the most abundant of steroid in animals. It is a major component of plasma membranes of cells and is less abundant in the membranes of subcellular organelles. It is also present as its esterified form in the lipoproteins found in the blood plasma. Now we'll talk about lipid membranes. We'll talk about micelles, lipid bilayers and liposomes. When amphipathic molecules such as lipids are mixed with water, the molecules arrange themselves in such a way that only the hydrophilic head groups make contact with water while the hydrophobic tails stay out of contact with water. As you can see in the figure on the screen, single tailed lipid molecules have a conical shape that is the surface area of their polar head group is larger than that of their tails. When dissolved in water, such lipid molecules arrange themselves in what is known as a micelle. The polar head groups lie on the outside making contact with water and hence are solvated, the hydrocarbon tails lie on the inside out of contact with water. Missile formation is a cooperative process. A missile will form only if the lipid concentration is beyond a certain threshold value called as a critical missile concentration or CMC. The value of CMC depends upon the nature of the amphipathic molecule and the solution conditions. A lipid molecule with two hydrocarbon chains per polar head group, such as uh, in the case of glycerophospholipids and sphingolipids, has a cylindrical shape. Such lipid molecules self-assemble into sheet-like arrangements known as lipid bilayers. In 1925, Edward Gotter and Franco S. Grendel were the first to show that lipids can assemble into bilayer structures in an aqueous environment. They showed that the area covered by the lipid extract from erythrocytes when spread as a monolayer on an air-water interface is twice that in the erythrocyte membrane. The hydrocarbon tails are 15 angstroms thick while the lipid bilayers have a thickness of 60 angstroms. Thus, the non-polar hydrocarbon tails must be fully extended in the lipid bilayers. Biological membranes are composed of lipid bilayers. They are impermeable to ionic and polar substances. However, they are easily permeable to water due to its small molecular size. The figure on your screen shows you the formation of bilayers and micelles by two tailed and single tailed lipid molecules. When a suspension of phospholipids in water is agitated by sonication, specific structures called liposomes are formed. They are closed, self-sealing and solvent-filled vesicles known as liposomes. They are bound only by a single bilayer. The figure on your screen shows a composite three-dimensional picture of micelles, bilayers and liposomes. Common ways of making liposomes include injecting an ethanolic solution of phospholipid into water or by dissolving the phospholipid in a detergent and then dialyzing out the detergent. Liposomes are quite stable structures and can be separated from the solution from which they are formed. These are artificially prepared spherical vesicles and are impermeable to many substances and this makes them useful as models of biological membranes. Artificially created liposomes are used to study properties of biological membranes. Due to their stability and impermeability, they are also used as vehicles for transport of small molecules of therapeutic importance such as anti-cancer drugs, 
antibiotics, enzymes and genes to specific tissues in the body. Once delivered to their target tissues, these liposomes fuse with the cell membranes, delivering their contents inside of the target cell. Lipid bilayers that make up the biological membranes are dynamic structures wherein the individual lipid molecules are not rigidly fixed but move around quite freely. The lipid molecules are very fluid. Two major kinds of movements of these lipid molecules within the lipid bilayer are transverse motion and lateral diffusion. Transverse motion of lipid molecules is also called as flop motion and is a high energy requiring motion and hence rarely takes place. This is because in a transverse motion, the polar head group of a lipid molecule would have to undergo direct contact with the hydrophobic tails, a highly unfavorable interaction. However, movement of the lipid molecules is much easier within the plane of the bilayer, that is by lateral diffusion. This involves a pairwise exchange in the positions of one phospholipid molecule for another within the same leaflet of the bilayer. Easy lateral motion of the lipids in the bilayer is attributed to the significant conformational flexibility around the CC bonds in the hydrocarbon chains. Lipid molecules in the bilayer can diffuse along the entire length of the bacterial cell which is approximately 1 micrometer in 1 second. Lateral diffusion across a bilayer is monitored by a technique known as FRAP or fluorescent recovery after photobleaching. A fluorophore is attached to a component of the lipid bilayer and then an intense laser pulse is focused on a very small area of around 3 micrometer square in order to destroy the fluorescence in that area. This event is called as fluorescence bleaching. The fluorescence in this area is soon recovered as a result of lateral diffusion of lipid molecules into the bleached area. The rate of recovery of fluorescence is measured using fluorescence microscopy. Due to such mobility of lipid molecules across a lipid bilayer, it is regarded as a two-dimensional fluid. Fluidity of a bilayer refers to the ease of lateral diffusion of the lipid molecules along the bilayer. It is worth noting that along the hydrocarbon chain of a lipid molecule, the ease of rotation around the CC bonds and hence the fluidity decreases as we approach the polar head group due to their interactions with the polar head group. In other words, viscosity increases as we approach the rigid polar head groups. The fluidity of a lipid bilayer varies also with temperature. Decrease in temperature reduces lateral mobility in the bilayer and vice versa. A certain threshold temperature exists below which the lipid bilayer shows very little lateral diffusion. That is, it loses its fluidity and becomes a gel-like solid. This temperature is known as a transition temperature since it is characteristic of a phase change like phenomena, an order to disorder transition. Below the transition temperature, the fatty acid chains in the bilayer line up in an ordered array. Above the transition temperature, the bilayer is also referred to as a liquid crystal, wherein the lipid molecules are highly mobile along the plane of the bilayer. The figure on your screen shows you the phase transition in a phospholipid bilayer. The transition temperature decreases with decrease in length of the hydrocarbon chain as well and also with the extent of unsaturation in the component fatty acid residues. Biological membranes are known to have properties similar to these artificial lipid bilayers. The transition temperatures of most biological membranes vary between 10 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. All animal membranes have a fluid-like character since their transition temperatures are well below the body temperature. This imparts flexibility to the membranes which allows for changes in their shape during cell growth and movement. A typical bilayer constituting an actual cell membrane is composed of both saturated and unsaturated fatty acid chains. The presence of unsaturated fatty acid chains in a bilayer introduces kinks in it due to the carbon-carbon double bonds leading to inefficient packing of the chains and hence lowering of the melting temperature. A third important factor impacting the fluidity of biomembrane is its structural component called as cholesterol. Presence of the rigid and planar steroid ring systems of cholesterol within the bilayer restricts the movement of the fatty acid chains leading to a more ordered state. Hence, in the fluid state, it decreases the fluidity. However, in the crystalline state, 
The fatty acid chains cannot pack together as efficiently due to the presence of cholesterol and hence it increases fluidity. Overall, cholesterol increases the temperature range for the order to disorder transition. This is of special relevance in bacteria which change the composition of their membranes to adjust to changing surrounding temperatures. They increase the degree of unsaturated fatty acids in their membranes in order to prevent themselves from freezing at very cold temperatures. In addition, greater fluidity permits easier interaction between different protein components of the membrane. Now we'll talk about how lipids anchor proteins and carbohydrates in the biological membranes. Artificially made lipid bilayers described so far are a useful model for biological membranes. Biological membranes are known to have properties similar to these artificial lipid bilayers. Essentially, the function of biological membranes is to separate the inside of the cell from the extracellular environment. One half of the bilayer faces the cytoplasmic milieu of the cell and is known as the cytoplasmic or the inner leaflet and the other half faces the extracellular environment and is known as the extracellular or the outer leaflet. In that context, they serve both as important barriers and facilitators for cell-cell communication. This is accomplished by virtue of their composite structures wherein the lipid bilayer structure anchors within it various proteins and carbohydrates that are held in place by various intermolecular forces. Proteins associated with the surface of the membrane via electrostatic forces and hydrogen bonds are called as peripheral or extrinsic membrane proteins. They can be separated from the membranes using relatively mild conditions such as change in pH, high ionic strength or with metal chelating agents. Proteins held in the bilayer by strong hydrophobic forces are called as integral membrane proteins. They can only be separated from the membrane by organic solvents, detergents and chaotropic agents and they tend to aggregate in aqueous solutions. Integral membrane proteins can be associated with either one of the surfaces of the membrane or they can span the membrane. The latter are known as transmembrane proteins. Both types of integral proteins have some regions that are exposed to the surrounding aqueous environment. This is closely related to the nature of amino acids making up the sequence of these proteins. While the membrane spanning regions of these proteins are composed of nonpolar and hydrophobic amino acids to allow favorable interactions with the nonpolar hydrocarbon chains of the lipid bilayer, the exposed regions are composed of polar amino acids. This makes the integral protein amphipathic in nature. Importantly, biological membranes are asymmetric with respect to their associated proteins. The transmembrane proteins will be oriented in only one particular direction with respect to the membrane and the surface proteins will be associated with one particular phase of the membrane. Carbohydrate contents in the, these membranes comes from either the directly linked oligosaccharide chains to the lipid molecules or oligosaccharide chains that are linked to the membrane proteins. These oligosaccharides serve as recognition sites for cell-to-cell -cell communication and hence are invariably found on the extracellular leaflet of the lipid bilayer. Jonathan Singer and Garth Nicholson in 1972 proposed their unifying theory of membrane structure known as a fluid mosaic model according to which integral proteins resemble icebergs floating in a two-dimensional sea. You can see the figure on your screen which shows the fluid mosaic model and the peripheral and integral proteins and the carbohydrates anchored in the biological membrane. The plasma membrane lipids are asymmetrically distributed in the outer and the inner leaflets. The nature of the lipid molecule in the inner and outer leaflets is related to the function of that biological membrane. Also, this distribution can be subject to change upon certain physiological situations. For example, in erythrocytes, choline containing lipids are generally found on the outer leaflet, whereas phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylethanolamine, and phosphatidylinositols are commonly found on the inner leaflet. During the formation of a blood clot, for example, the phosphatidylserine in the plasma membrane shifts to the outer leaflet. In some cases, this shift of phosphatidylserine to the outer leaflet also marks the cell for destruction. Such a movement has been described above as a flip-flop motion. As already told to you, it is energetically highly unfavorable 
and therefore is facilitated by a special family of proteins that catalyze this process. These include flipases, flopases and scramblases. The action of these three classes of enzymes are illustrated in the figure shown on your screen. Now we'll talk about lipid rafts. Lipid distribution in the plasma membranes is not always even. Sphingolipids form clusters in the outer leaflet of the plasma membranes. The rigid ring system of cholesterol in the plasma membrane stacks much better with the saturated chains of sphingolipids than with the short unsaturated chains in the glycerophospholipids. It has been observed by atomic force microscopy that cholesterol sphingolipids form thick and ordered microdomains in the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane. Cholesterol content of these domains is much higher than that in the surrounding membrane which is richer in phospholipids. These thicker and more ordered microdomains are much more difficult to solubilize with non-ionic detergents as compared to the phospholipids that surround the C-membrane. Such microdomains are called as lipid rafts. There is no strict boundary that separates these lipid rafts from the rest of the membrane and proteins freely move into and out of these rafts. However, the rate of movement of proteins within these rafts is in the scale of microseconds and that for movement into and out of the rafts is on the time scale of seconds. Rafts can occupy as much as 50% of the cell surface. Functional importance of lipid rafts stems from the fact
high layer. Fluidity of the membranes is affected by the presence of cholesterol. Flip-flop motion of the lipid molecules from one leaflet of the bilayer to the other is energetically unfavorable and hence is catalyzed by enzymes like flipases, flopases and scramblases. Biological membranes are unsymmetrical in their distribution of both lipids and associated proteins. And finally, the separation of lipid molecules from a complex mixture can be achieved by using organic solvents or via adsorption chromatography.